Welcome back everybody. In this video we'll be looking at um, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 through till 19. So quite a big, big chunk of scripture here. So it reads, starting from verse 10. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood, let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol, which is like the place of the grave, place of the dead. Yeah, Even whole as those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious wealth. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot with us. We shall all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your feet from their path. For their feet rush run into evil, and they hasten to shed blood. Indeed, it is useless to spread the net in the eyes of any bird, but they lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who, who gains by violence. It takes away the life of all its possessors. So, this is talking about lying in wait for people, setting traps for people. Now, when people hear this, they sort of run to the conclusion of young people hanging about the streets, uh, hanging uh, next to um, some sort of uh, bridge or something, ready to jump on uh, some poor unsuspecting woman or man or whatever. Um, I remember seeing the film Harry Brown, and it was about this, this old guy confronting the youths and, and, and giving them sort of a run for their money. It's, we think about that when we read these verses, but we shouldn't sort of confine our thinking to that sort of a scenario. There are plenty of scenarios in our workplaces where we spread traps for people, or, well, not me personally, but people have spread traps for other people to fall into. And the thing is, where it says in full view of the birds, in full view of other people who can be influenced by their opinion of you through what you've done. So if you do something underhanded in your work to get someone into trouble, beware, people are watching you. People are judging your character. People are deciding whether you're a savoury character or not um, as a result of what you do and how you behave towards these people. I think this also ties in to trying to exact revenge against people. It's very important not to not to take uh, revenge in these ways. So I want to go back to verse 10. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. So I'm reminded of um, the Back to the Future series, Back to the Future Part 2. In Back to the Future Part 1, I don't know if you're familiar with the films, but Marty McFly, played by Michael J. Fox, goes back to the future, goes back to 1955, and he stumbles across his dad and stops his mum and dad from falling in love and then they eventually fall in love at the end of the movie. Anyway, in part two, he goes with the Doc, Doc Brown, to the future where there's flying cars and such. Oddly enough, it's 2018 and I can't see any flying cars outside, oh dear guys. Um, but when they get there, then he's told by the Doc he has to stop his son or pretend to be his son to stop his son from going with with Griff, um, the, the main bully, bully's son, to, to sort of smash things up and he ends up going to jail. So he's to stop his son from going to jail. So he, he, he succeeds in this, he succeeds in st stopping his son from going to jail, but he causes a whole load of other misery in the future. Anyway, to cut a long story short, just like Griff would try and get Marty McFly's son to go in and get himself into trouble so he ends up in jail, so other people will try and entice you into similar sort of things. I mean, they might entice you into money laundering or, or taking some violent revenge, going around someone's house uh, on some estate and smashing them up or something like that. These things, it's just not worth it. It's not worth the risk. It's not worth throwing your uh, coin or whatever or slot or whatever onto the roulette machine uh, and, and seeing if it lands on the right colour. There's, there's really no point. It's really, really not good. 
So if they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood, let us ambush the innocent without cause, obviously you shouldn't go with them. Now, this might make a lot of sense to a lot of people. Oh, we shouldn't just hurt people for no reason. But supposing there is a reason, is it right then? And the answer to the question is no. Don't be a violent person. Know how to deal with violence. I, I, I actually agree with young people going and learning some sort of martial art and some sort of restraint technique because I think every man or every, every person should know how to deal with violent situations. But that doesn't mean I think people should be violent. I think there's a lot of difference between being able to deal with violent situations and being a violent person. And the thing is, I would be strongly against being a violent person. I think to myself these days, even if someone tried to hit me, I would try to restrain them first. If, if they were too big and I couldn't restrain them, then I might have to fight them. But I don't want to go there. It's not out of fear. It's, it's, out of, it's, it's not a good situation. It's not a good situation to be like that. So this is talking about that. Don't, don't be a somebody who gains by violence, who is somebody who gets what they want by being violent. Don't be that sort of person because you can get into the habit then of always being violent to get what you want, of always using your fists and your, and your, your kicks and stuff to get, to get your own way with, with men, to intimidate other men, to intimidate other people in general. So don't be that sort of thing. Anyway, thank you for watching this uh, seventh instalment of the Proverbs.